Hello and welcome into this edition of the Golf Channel Podcast with Rex and Lav. It's Friday night. Wyndham Clark has staked himself to a four-shot lead at the halfway point of this Players Championship. Newsy day here at TPC Sawgrass. Wyndham's back-to-back 65s. Scotty Scheffler's neck issue. Roy McIlroy's backtrack in the second round. But first, Rex, a pretty significant development. You did not touch it, touch on it on live from we will on this very podcast as first reported by golf week and confirmed by us members of the PGA tour policy board have been encouraged to meet with Yasser al Ramayan, the governor, of the public investment fund of Saudi Arabia. Rex, it was Webb Simpson last week at Bay Hill who expressed at least some surprise that the players hadn't yet been involved to this point in the proceedings and the negotiations with the PIF. What's your read on what this means now that they're being, uh, encouraged to do so? Uh, it's actually encouraging on a couple of levels. I think both of us sort of had the same take following Jay Monahan, the commissioner of the PGA Tours press conference earlier this week, that it did, I didn't feel like we were any closer to a deal than we were on June 6th. He just didn't sound, I mean, obviously he couldn't say much, but what he was able to say wasn't very encouraging. I actually read this as an encouraging sign because I go back to the conversation you and I had last week about the idea and, and Webb had told me at Bay Hill that we probably should have met meeting the player directors, the six player directors with the, the Saudis by now. I will point to what Adam Scott said, a player director, just this afternoon when we kind of asked him, should you have met with him by now? And his reaction was, no, I should not. I should not be negotiating with them, period. That's not what he does best. That's not what they do best. They're all really good golfers, but that does not qualify them to sit in a room and negotiate a multi-billion dollar deal. That said, I think it is a good step. If they do get in a room and at least they they're face to face and they can have a conversation and find out exactly maybe the motivations of each side. If I think the PGA Tour and the players can understand the motivations from the public investment fund side, what are they hoping to accomplish in the game of golf? I think that will probably make the process go a little bit easier. Now, that reporting who was uh, done by our, our colleague Eamon Lynch also said that this is not written in stone. It's supposed to happen Monday here in Ponte Vedra. They said a lot of moving parts. As you pointed out, they're being encouraged to meet with them. But as Webb Simpson told us when he came off the golf course today and after he missed the cut, he was going home to Charlotte. <laughs> and he didn't add much to that. I mean, I don't think we can read too much into it. Tiger Woods, a policy board player director, he's not even here this week. So it's kind of hard to figure out how all this is going to come together. But I read this as an encouraging step. Is there anything more awkward, Rex, than trying to grab a player after he just missed the cut for something that's kind of tangential to to the actual golf performance? Like you're yeah. you're sitting there, fingers crossed. Webb Simpson has a six footer for birdie. If he makes it, he makes the cut. If he misses it, uh, he is heading home. Instead, he misses it. It was awkward. Uh, Webb Simpson, typically nicest man gregarious. in the world, had exactly. no in this whatsoever. Completely gregarious, uh, always uh, accommodating with his time. He still was on this in this front. Uh, did did confirm some details of it on he went into the night uh to, to your point rex i understand that the pga tour players are not are not hammering out the terms here they're not they're not they're not in the room negotiating this billion dollar deal and they shouldn't potentially be. and they shouldn't be but I, I i agree with you that i still think this is an important and a necessary step the fact that they can now look yasir in the face and ask what is it that you actually want yeah. You know, do you care about the future of the PG Tour? Do you want to take it over? D- can you can you part with with Team Golf? How essential is that to you uh, for the future of the of the PG Tour potentially? How many of your live guys actually want to come back? As Adam Scott told us, you know, you're essentially now putting a, a face to the name. As Jordan Spieth said, you know, if there's any sort of potential for negotiation, it's a must that the players actually get into the room and meet with representatives from the PIF. And this is obviously the, the big dog. I, I agree with you. Uh, and just to put a fine point, I think it's a positive development that underscores the desire for more urgency here. Sausage fingers up, which means the floor is yours. Well, it's important to read the second half of that Adam Scott quote that you just did. And it's quote, I'm not negotiating and thank God for everyone that I'm not. I'm curious to see how that all pans out. This goes to the idea, and again, what we discussed last week, the player directors will ultimately have a say in this because the policy board, the board of directors for PGA Tour Enterprises will ultimately decide if there's going to be a deal with the public investment fund. But I I was told this last week by an agent, and I was taken by how kind of profound it is. I hadn't really thought about it. You're taking 
six of the world's best golfers, maybe the best golfer of all time in Tiger Woods. And you're assuming just because they can play this game really, really well, that they're also qualified to negotiate a multi-billion dollar, very nuanced deal. That's akin to, and again, this isn't my take. It was someone else's take, so I don't want to take the credit for this one. But that's akin to going to the CEO of AT&T and be like, hey, you're a really good executive. You should have a tea time at Augusta National for the Masters. They, they will have a vote. And thankfully, they now have Joe Ogilvie, who's a director liaison on the board of directors for Enterprises. They also have Colin Neville, who has been an advisor for them, a very, very smart guy who has been involved in these types of deals. They have a lot of people around them to help them. But no, I don't think any of them should have been in the room negotiating and hashing out the finer points of this. Getting face to face is great, but this is just the first step. And look, I, I think it's sometimes forgotten that the players are the product here. You, know, you can hammer out the, the billions of dollars that are going to be, but there is no product worth investing in if the players are not involved, if the players are not uh, kind of creating what potentially could be, I think, a really awesome product in the next couple of years. We've had so much turmoil over the past couple of years, so much division. I think both products, as we discussed in the preview podcast, are suffering at the current moment. But there is potential in a year or two years where something really awesome can emerge. Uh, I agree. This is a very positive step. How about Rex, the Players Championship? It was also a newsy day on that front as well. I think we first start not actually with Wyndham Clark, but the world number one, Scotty Scheffler, the world beater. You and I talked to Scotty Scheffler of the field. Well, now that is a little bit of a concern on the 12th hole. Actually, this is Scotty Scheffler's second shot into 11, his second hole of a day. Felt a little bit of a, of a, of a twinge in his neck. Started getting worked on uh, by a PG Tour masseuse on the, on the 12th hole, 14th hole, 16th hole, and it continued throughout the rest of the round. Scotty Scheffler. Still played pretty well. So she had a couple under par. He still is within shouting distance of Wyndham Clark. But Scotty did not speak with the media afterward. Went to get more treatment. Uh, Ted Scott, his caddy, uh, stiff arm me uh, in an aggressive Heisman pose uh, to get more details on that front as well. But to you, Rex, how much of a concern is Scotty's neck issue as we turn towards the weekend? I think it always has to be a concern. We've seen, I mean, we just talked about Tiger Woods. There's a reason why he's not in the field this week, because injury just one by one by one. It was just a conga line of injuries that eventually took him out of the game, and, and we're probably not going to see him again until the Masters. You did the reporting on that earlier tonight, that he's not going to play in Tampa. So please go to NBCSports.com backslash golf to, to get that news, because that was a huge update that we had to get on the website. <laughs> I, said there, I said there was a minute chance <laughs> that he could no play. Chance. There was and never just, any chance. And I mean, I, I, it's just funny that you felt compelled to write the story. I, I just got a chuckle that you. The only even, reason I wrote the story, because it, there was it, this is the Valspar represented Tiger's last realistic chance to get a tune up start. Why can't he play Masters. Houston? Instead, why can't he play San Antonio? There's two he's more. He's never played Houston. He hasn't played Texas Open since '96. He obviously is not going to play the week before the Masters. I don't know. It was just it was wishful thinking. Instead, Tiger Woods, 15-time major champion, is going to be showing up at Augusta National with with one and a half uh, competitive rounds officially under his belt right, in 2024. Right. Podcast for not, another day. This is a mini. We're, we're getting, we digress. We digress. To answer your question, yes, of course it's concerning. And look, uh, it is interesting. That apparently he woke up and didn't have any problems. He went through his warm up, didn't have any problems. I, I thought it was fascinating. He played the first hole, which was the tenth hole here at TPC Sawgrass. Textbook drive right down the middle. My favorite drive, as I've said numerous times this week, hits it to two feet, taps in for birdie. You're like, oh, he is off and running. And whatever happened on the eleventh hole, he gets to the twelfth tee. He starts having therapy. Of course, you're going to have concerns, and there's an utter lack of any information whatsoever. So we're trying to fill the void here. I would caution that. You can sleep wrong, you can you can swing in a weird way and end up just tweaking something. I think we've all done that. I mean, I I, I I really think we need to wait this one out. But yeah, he's the world number one. He is in full stride. Yeah, I mean, he was 1A this week, and my 1A is injured, my 1B went in reverse. So it wasn't a very good day for me. Yeah, it was certainly disappointing just because it seemed like Scotty was was going to be in full flight, as you mentioned. Like he, he hit it to three feet on the opening hole and looked like he was going to be off to the races. Uh, he said it really affects him on his takeaway. It, it's 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 his left 
shoulder neck area and sort of dragging the club away is where he felt uh, a little bit of a of a twinge there it didn't necessarily Sorry, i'm getting distracted here because I'm, I'm looking at you through the window to my to my left here and and what what people can't see and this is a visual medium medium for some people you're doing the swing and you're showing the shoulder yes do it again yes yeah, do it again it's here and, and, it and it's and it's there and, and it's there all right and it's there and it, and it feels a little bit of a twinge in his neck like he still shot 60 Theater of still, the mind he still has a, a, a great opportunity to to win this golf tournament he's six shots back heading into the weekend and you look at the way that he played on friday maybe he was not 100 uh, we talked about a live from he was swinging two to four miles per hour on average club head speed a little bit slower and yet he still missed just three fairways he still missed just four greens in regulation as i mentioned he still shot 69 uh, late tee times for the third round now that we've had daylight savings time and so he's essentially going to have about 24 hours to get right to get treatment i really don't think i'm assuming this is not some sort of like structural issue I, I really don't think it should be that big of an obstacle for him i, I think the bigger obstacle Rex is is the deficit that he's facing with six shots and also the player that he's going to have to hunt down uh, the very player that he beat last week at Bay Hill. And that's Wyndham Clark. What stood out to you about his back to back 65 here to open up a, a pretty comfortable set, a, a pretty comfortable cushion. It's been so easy to overlook Wyndham Clark because he's kind of a uh, kind of a quiet guy. He doesn't do a lot. I, I think in a lot of ways he's a little bit like Scotty, and we talked about this earlier in the week about boring golf. And I, it was funny to run that by players, and I think it was Max Homa who was asked, "Do you think Scotty Scheffler plays boring golf?" And his retake was, "That should be aspirational for every golfer around the planet. Hitting fairways and greens should be what we all want to do. If we could all play boring golf, imagine how much." fun the game would actually be i, I kind of think Wyndham sort of has been doing that the last year but i i was fascinated today he kind of talked about when did he'd always been a good ball striker but the putting just hadn't been matched up to that and we asked him today what was the low point when it comes to your putting and it was here a year ago at tpc sawgrass he finished he was top 10 ball striking and bottom third of the field and putting he goes to tampa next week where i can't believe tiger woods isn't playing it was the same thing on round one where he was top 10 ball striking bottom third of the field in putting and that's when he switched to that jailbreak mallet putter and since then he need it the i got i gotta have that putter not gonna lie uh it, it is a good looking putter it's a very very good looking putter uh and since then he's been the most dominant player on the planet he's went two signature events finished second last week in a signature event won a u.s open and it's been sort of this climb that it, again, he's been really easy to overlook. He's been easy to sort of dismiss because he 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 did it in such a way that isn't flashy. It's not Jordan Spieth out there. It's not even Rory McIlroy, and we're going to get into his round. It, I mean, that was just a wild, wild day for him. That's not the way he does it. If you watch him play golf, this is old school sleeping on the couch Sunday afternoon because he's not really doing anything to ignite imagine, uh, imagination. He's just being brilliant fascinating that you call Wyndham Clark the most dominating player on the planet 12 months most, last 12 months mm, not sure I would say that either he does not have as many wins as John Rahm has had uh, he does not have as many wins as Scotty Scheffler's had heck he doesn't even have as many wins as Joaquin Neiman has had oh that's not true I'm talking about the last 12 months since last year's players championship he has more wins than John Rahm and Scotty Scheffler do the math are you counting Liv? Um, Are you counting he's the got hero? Three. Scotty has well one. Yeah, true. Uh, okay. John he still he still is not dominant. I think if he's not dominant, I think he has proven himself, Rex, to be uh, I think I called he's him a, a world big game class player. He's on, in on, on Thursday's podcast. Like all he's doing now is showing up in big events. You look at what he's done in 2024. He won Pebble, which was short in the 54 holes. He he uh, finished second. Uh, at Bay Hill, and now he's doing what he's doing here uh, at the PGA Tour's flagship event. I, I found it interesting, and I wrote tonight on NBC Sports, uh, uh, com slash golf how much Wyndham Clark has been pushed by Scotty Scheffler, Scotty's excellence, Scotty's consistency. Wyndham popped up and had a career year in 2023, and yet he was still nine top tens fewer than what Scotty Scheffler put together during what was his back-to-back player of the year campaign i think there's a very God, interesting he's been more consistent i will grant for you sure that, for man. sure like it's been a, it's a very interesting contrast in the two players scotty is the best player tita green uh since peak tiger woods but 
But Wyndham Clark is much longer off the tee, you know, averaging 15 yards longer than Scotty Scheffler. He's a much better putter, as we've seen, not just over the course of these first 36 holes, but over the course of their careers. Like Wyndham Clark has always been a top tier putter. And so you you combine that length uh, with with his proficiency on the greens. And now the missing piece is Wyndham Clark has talked incessantly as was showcased uh, in the full swing documentary uh, on Netflix, the, the self-belief and the confidence and the mental game is really what has taken his game to the next level. Wyndham Clark was always a, a standout junior player. Uh, he was a co co college player of the year with Sam Burns uh, at Oklahoma state. And, and, and finally at Oregon during his senior year, but, the fact that he couldn't get get there and, and attain that level of success uh, as a PJ Tour player really, really tore at him, really gnawed at him. And it took him three or four years before he ended up linking up with Julie Elion uh, to really kind of access his enormous gifts. It's it's a lot of fun, I think, to watch a player who's 30 years old and is now coming to into his own uh, and watching him kind of embrace these big stages as he has done here, including uh, at the Players' Championship. Rex, what, what what the heck happened to Rory? What ha- what happened to your boy? He shot 73. One day. One he, day. Declined, he declined to talk to the media. He's now eight shots back. Were we too quick to anoint him as back? Uh, what gets me is it's not what we thought it was going to be. We mm. thought it was going to be his iron play because that had been the issue. I think you and I had fun on Wednesday night kind of sorting this all out. I put him 1B. Scotty was 1A for my picks so far this week. And I admit it, it was a leap of faith. I mean, I was kind of buying what his camp was telling me, what he was telling me. Clued into something that he didn't have last week at Bay Hill. Two different swings. He's got a driver and a wood swing, and he's got an iron swing. And on day one, you kind of saw this. Now, he had two terrible driver swings, which led to those two in the water, led to drops, and we can get into drop gate at another time. However, it was today, he was just, it, it just wasn't two sort of random offshoots. He kind of dismissed those two swings yesterday. He said he, he wasn't in the right mind frame, that he wasn't committed to the shot. He had some wild, wild drives today. I mean, not just inopportune hooks or what I would call just kind of out of nowhere. He's cruising along and everything's fine. He didn't make a par today until the seventh hole. I mean, he was either brilliant or terrible. And I I had this conversation with Rory before. And I know he was angry coming off the golf course, as he should be. But if you look at the amount of birdies he made versus the amount of bogeys and others. is the exact same number of birdies that Wyndham Clark has made. And yet he's eight shots back. Yeah, and that that has everything to do with what you did on the other holes. And this is kind of quintessential Rory, isn't it? I think we've talked about this before, the idea that he has to be the the greatest star player, the greatest player who is in that upper echelon, who at a moment's notice can just come unraveled. Like, look, uh, Scotty Scheffler can... He's fantastic, but flawed. Maybe Scotty Scheffler can... Yeah. he, he, He always has been. I think that's what makes him such a fascinating player. And I will say, and we kind of got into this last night, and I had to give you credit, although you just said that Wyndham Clark is entertaining. And I'm going to go the other way. And and I know I don't find did him. I? Partic- uh, yes, you did. And that's why I was kind of curious because we think, just had no, this conversation I said it's fun about to Scotty Scheffler. Who's coming into his own. I don't think he's necessarily a dynamic player. I think it's fun to see a player coming into his own and thrive on the big stages. That's well, and this goes to Scotty Scheffler playing quote unquote boring golf. And we kind of disagreed on that. What Roy McElroy did today. It was ugly. I'm sure he's angry. And sometimes it was hard to watch, but man, it's entertaining. It's why Jordan Spieth is so popular because he's entertaining. Cause you know, he's not going to hit fairways and greens. He's going to put himself over in the trees and he's going to have to pull off some sort of hero shot. And then he's going to have to make a putt. that he's going to have to tell Grello to go get it out of the hole. That's what, that's the beauty of the, sort of these players, even Tiger Woods. I mean, if you take 1999, 2000, 2001 out of the equation, those were the pinnacle years for Tiger driving it. He didn't really drive it that well, but he always found a way to be brilliant, even though he didn't drive it that well. That's why I think he was so entertaining and he won more than anyone else in you know of our time. But when you look at what Rory did today, like that's that's the quintessential round, is it not? Like that is his round. If you had to show Rory McIlroy without actually showing Rory McIlroy in just scorecard form, just throw that scorecard up. It's it's like quintessential post twenty fourteen Rory. When we yeah, still think yeah. of Rory in 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 2011, 2012, 2014, he has a down year in twenty thirteen, but twenty fourteen, like the dominant Rory, the Rory that could that blow the doors off a tournament. This is this is the Rory who we saw. Uh, so so phenomenal, uh, so crisp on day one, and then flustered, 
frustrated, uh, missing both directions. And this was this was actually I was thinking this in my head, and I'm I, I feel bad that I didn't verbalize it because I actually was thinking it that when you have these two swing thoughts as as Roy has had, and let's let's have some context here that Roy McRoy is driving the ball as well as he ever has in his entire career and, and quite possibly until one of the best. today and yesterday. Yes. Well, and let's quite, let's put note that. And ent- entering this week, he was driving the ball as well as he ever has in his, in his entire career in one of the best uh, driving periods we've seen in the history of the PGA tour. And yet he arrived here at TPC Sawgrass adamant and insistent that he was going to figure this out and, and create this driver swing and the iron swing. Well, it's, it's clear that, that the iron swing and the thought he has may have now infected what was actually working so well with his driver for the first time in ages. I don't have the stats in front of me. He is actually losing strokes off off the tee to the field. Roy McIlroy is losing strokes off the tee uh, to the field. You couple that with some really poor scrambling. He's just three of ten. He hit uh, four fewer greens than he did. Uh, on Friday, it was definitely a setback, understandably, uh, incredibly frustrated second round uh, for Rory McIlroy. Rec, what is one thing that you're looking forward to watching Saturday at the Players' Championship? Do you think we're going to have another situation like 2018? Remember Webb Simpson was five shots clear at the halfway point, increased that to seven, and then Sunday was an absolute snooze? Or do you think of Xander Schauffele? Do you think of Nick Taylor? Do you think someone like Maverick McNeely? Uh, can pop up a uh, Scotty Scheffler once he gets right. You think he can pop up uh, and, and make this make this a tournament? All afternoon you were piping off about the the Webb Simpson comparison. You couldn't wait to, to throw Nailed that it. one out there. Nailed if it. If he's leading by seven tomorrow, yeah, like you're just gonna go ahead and write that column and go home. You're not even gonna come back on Sunday, are you? No. And like I actually I went back and looked at my Webb Simpson one. I was actually pretty proud of that one. It was it, back on Mother's Day. Good little story. I think I one got another honorable mention in the, in the writing contest. No one, no one gets, no one gets more honorable mentions than me. Also, Rands. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to a couple of things. One, we spent a lot of time talking about Scotty Scheffler. I, it, you do want to go out. Like, we're gonna, we're both gonna shuffle over to the range tomorrow morning, wait for him to show up, and see exactly what we get out of Scotty Scheffler. Because you, you, like, you don't want to think this is bad. But again, anytime you start dealing with injuries in and around the neck, whether if this was the neck or the shoulder whatever the case may be, you always get a little bit concerned. So that's probably 1A. I'm, I am going to go out and watch Mav McNeely because as you and I discussed tonight, if, if you want to listen in and get smarter at golf and Brandel Chambly is really, get smarter really good at, at anything, it, listen to Mav McNeely. Get smarter at anything. But, but get smarter at golf. Brandel Chambly, look, man, like I, I get smarter every time I listen to that guy talk. I'd like to think folks – like Robbie from Lake City. Robbie, it was so great to meet you today. Tune into our podcast, maybe get a little bit get a little bit smarter at golf. But if you really want to dig down, like just go to Matt McNeely and ask him whatever you want to do. He was asked today after he finished up his round about the challenges of this golf course. And he essentially went 18 holes on us. Like you got to hit a draw here. You got to hit a fade there. This one, you got to end up on the right side of the fairway. But if you're too far right, like he broke it down in a way that was – succinct it was intelligent it was bulletproof and he just strikes me and, and you've been on the bandwagon since way back when he was in college so I, I know that but for those of us who haven't been paying attention the way you have he is such a breath of fresh air and now like the way he described the swing and what he had to do following the injuries of last season it's an entirely different swing i'm so encouraged through two rounds i, I just want to see I don't know if he can win. Maybe he can. Maybe he can't. I just want to see if he can sustain it for two more days. No rooting in the press box, nope. of course, but you absolutely cannot help but root for Maverick McNally. By far the smartest athlete I have ever covered in my journalism career it, on any topic. Uh, and so it would be great to see. I, I, I do agree with you. He's, he's the type of player that you would want to run for PAC chairman, put him on the policy board. Uh, he could do wonders uh, for the PJ Tour. Uh, me, thank you for asking. Most curious to see what Xander Shoffley does in this third front round. Live from did a breakdown of the swing changes that he's undergoing on Thursday, and they showed him uh, kind of uh, burning the midnight oil with his swing coach, Chris Como, uh, on the range afterward. Xander's really hit, the only mistake that he had in the second round was a terrible swing on 11, the par five, where he's, he's thinking eagle. Instead, makes double. Otherwise, he was incredibly solid uh, from tee to green. Uh, I, I just wonder what the swing changes that he's undergoing now, if it can hold up in crunch time. 
with the pressure. He's not won in nearly two years uh, on the PGA Tour. I think it's also a, an interesting contrast it serves with those two players, with with Xander Schauffele, who's obviously very technical at this point, uh, t- trying to really implement these changes, and Wyndham Clark, who is who is free, his mind is uncluttered, he hasn't worked with a, sw- a swing coach for years. Uh, I think it's it's a very interesting contrast. Uh, and as of right now, as we sit here on Friday night, I think I know who I would trust more in crunch time uh, with with the pressure at its its highest. Uh, right now, it would be Wyndham Clark. Be Wyndham. But, I think, but I think Saturday would go a long way uh, towards telling us if that is actually true. And I will say, uh, outside of you and I, I think uh, Chris Como has probably put in the most hours this week of anyone. He did a marathon <laughs> massive sw- session with Jason Day on Monday. And then, as you pointed out, he was working very, very late with Xander. He's got other players in the field. The dude is putting in the hours. Absolutely. Uh, as always, this one went longer than we were intending, but there was a little bit of news with the secret meeting that is apparently not, not so, so secret. secret any more but for more information you guys know the drill make sure to go to nbcsports.com slash golf for all of rex and mine's latest updates on saturday you and i will be doing our little dance at 11 15 a.m eastern time if you folks want to catch that as well in the meantime thank you guys as always for listening for the support robbie we loved you thanks for coming to meet us today any other fans who's at tpc sawgrass rex and i would love to see you We do appreciate the support. As always, we'll talk to you guys in 24 hours. See you then. Pray for me in the morning.